Hey everyone, this is Flammy. Welcome back. We're here with another subscriber base review video. This week we are looking at Town Hall 6s, so I'm taking your guys' Town Hall 6 bases and reviewing them on video. So if you guys would like to be in one of these videos, there's a link in the description or I will go over the full details for how you can be in one uh, at the end of this video. But for now, we're going to jump right into it. We have our very first Town Hall 6 base. We have Rocky here. Alright, so Rocky's level 44, 14, 48 trophies. Not bad at all. Very good, in fact, I'd say. Uh, let's look at your defensive levels, okay? Level 4 mortars, that's maxed out for Town Hall 6. Uh, Wizard Towers, level 2 and level 2. They could be up to level 3, I do believe. So, could keep on working on those, but of course, you are in the middle of Town Hall 6, so not saying that you're done or anything. Um, let's look at your defensive layout real briefly. Um, I do like to go over Mortars and Wizards first of all, because they are really the most important. You do have more cannons and more Wizards. All bases do, of course, but the splash damage is really what makes a difference, especially the lower levels. Uh, because at lower levels, you're fighting infantry the vast majority of the time, and that's where splash damage really shines. That's some of the top top players, if you're spectating top players on the top of the leaderboards, uh, in that case it doesn't. it's not really about splash and you'll notice you'll, they don't centralize wizards or mortars. They'll use the really high damage per second buildings so those are going to be teslas, which are of course hard to see, but of course they have little blank spots, but you only have this at town hall 6 and they'll centralize things like the magma towers. Um, but of course you don't have those either. Anyways, let's look at the layout. So Something I do like about this base, Rocky, is that so you got these outside compartments. Uh, not super normal, but uh, when you do it with this particular way that you have done, I think this is actually going to be pretty effective. So this compartment up here and this compartment up here are mirror images of one another. You've got uh, one cannon in each of them. Now this single larger compartment down here, you've got one cannon and one archer tower. Now having a couple defenses out here in these sort of outer uh, segments is actually going to be pretty effective because what you're going to have is when any time any Anyone attacks with giants. The giants aren't going to go towards like these walls right in here to bust into the center. No, they're going to go for this archer tower or this cannon typically because those are generally going to be closer. Uh, it's possible they could try to get in towards the center. Like I think if you put down enough giants like right here, they'd go for this archer tower, probably busting through one of these walls instead. But in general, like if they place giants anywhere out here, it's going to go for this compartment. Anywhere out here. Uh, mostly up here and mostly down here, this is going to go for these side compartments. Right in here, maybe once again it'd go for this archer tower if it's closest, but in general, yeah, like I said, going for the outer compartments. What does that allow you to do? Well, it distracts the giants and really slows them down, and the major advantage there is going to be these splash damage buildings are going to start doing a lot of damage. Now, let's look at the actual placement of buildings. Uh, to start off, let's look at these gold storages. They look like they're sort of weird being on the outside. People might think they're sort of strange. Well, I suspect that these gold storages are actually very, very empty. Uh, I'm going to open them up and find out. And yeah, 31,000 in this one and going to be the same in this one. They uh, do evenly split for the vast majority of the time. And why is this uh, significant? Well, if you had a good amount of gold, I'm sure your normal place to keep these two storages is right here and right here. But because they're so low right now, you've popped them out to the outside. Uh, interesting decision. When you've got 31,000, people can steal 25% of this. Um, and that works out to be, uh, what is that? About 7,000 gold. Um, when people are attacking a gold mine, however, they can steal 50% of it. So, let's see. 50% of this is, of course, going to be less than 7,000. So, you're going to want to, in this situation, keep your gold mines in the outside position. So it, it'd be ideal to swap them. If these gold stores were very, very empty, that's a fine thing to do. Very tricky and sort of optimal, like optimizing right there. I know I'm always mentioning this, Ricky, uh, Rocky, because uh, I can tell you're sort of paying attention to it. I, I'd imagine this is not the normal place to keep the gold storages, as I mentioned. Now, if your gold storages are here and here, however, uh, is this really ideal? Well, one suggestion I would make is swap a gold mine with this and push, put the elixir down here. Then you could have got them positioned across from one another. That's uh, that's good and better because, quite simply, if someone wants to attack and get gold from you, they just attack from the bottom, and if the two storages are right here, they just get all that. If someone wants to get elixir, they attack from the top, and the two storages are right here. Also, last thing you do a good job of is you position your wizard tower so it covers this outside storage more, which makes you think that maybe there's a chance that's a sort of permanent position, and you just swap uh, them in place here. Yeah, you're really going to want to keep the storage in the center, uh, and perhaps that means moving the wizard tower so it's centralized more. 
and protecting both the storages. Now, probably the most sort of, I guess, controversial part of your base would be this town hall in the center. In general, I'd recommend keeping your town hall outside the walls, even if you're making a trophy push. It's absolutely possible to have uh, your town hall outside the walls and maintain a very high trophy count. In fact, in some ways, one of your lower town hall, especially town hall 6, town hall 7, is better to keep it outside because anyone who's up at 14, 45, uh, 48 trophies is probably going to be able to 3 star you if they want to. They're going to be mostly Town Hall 7s, 8s, 9s even. Um, so putting your Town Hall outside the walls might mean that you're going to get some more 1 stars rather than 3 stars, which actually will make you maintain your trophies even easier. Alright, before we switch on to the next base, the last thing we do is check out your army camp real fast. Interesting mix of units you got here. Uh, yeah, really interesting. So the healer, I'm not so sure about. That's a lot of healers. It takes up a ton of supply. Of course, this army is not full, so it's only 111 out of 135. But to have three healers in there takes up 60 supply. That's taking up not quite uh, half, but a bit less. That's a lot of... Oh, wait, no, healers are less now. I don't think they're 20 supply still. I don't use healers. I haven't used healers since they made the supply change, really. Uh, so they did down their supply to, I think it was about 14. Um, to, but still, it's a very significant percentage of your supply. I think that's about 30% right there of your supply. And then looking at the rest of it, Healers work pretty good with with wizards. Healers don't work super well with balloons. Um, working well with wizards is good because it's your main army composition, but I don't know. I'd have to think about this. Um, your units aren't super high level. They're not going to be doing both great damage or great heals per second, but uh, maybe this is what works out for you. I would uh, encourage you to try other army compositions. Typically, even at these higher trophy counts, you can get away with... Uh, so armies that are more focused around not never like three starring the base, but like just doing enough damage to get that one or two star, depending on where the town hall is. You can do a lot of damage at a higher trophy counts if you're just uh, not trying to get everything at once. Just focus on one part of the base, attack it really well, and then just be done. But all right, let's move on to the next one. Rocky, thank you very much for submitting your base. Hope there's some good tips. And um, yeah, thank you. Also, for your message, you did say you're a big fan and you have liked both my Facebook page and subscribed. Thank you very much for doing both of those. Hope you enjoyed your subscriber base review. On to the next one. Alright, here we are with our second base. We've got Thonk. What a great name. From Reddit Zeta. He is a Town Hall 6, and in his message he says he's working on maxing out his walls before he continues up to the next Town Hall level. Alright, yeah, so that's a pretty good goal. Uh, sometimes unnecessary, uh, especially the higher counts. But uh, if you don't mind raiding for the goal, it's certainly easier to do it when you're a lower Town Hall level. So definitely better to do that now rather than later. But let's check your defenses while we are here. Alright, level 4 mortars, level 3 wizard towers, I'm liking the looks of this. Level 3 air defense, you could max that out to one more level, I do believe. Um, and these ones, level 7s, yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, that is. So, those are all maxed out as well. Good job with that. Uh, I do notice you have a trap down here, so this is probably a spring trap right here. Probably hoping to catch giants, like to see that. Your walls are very compact, your town hall is outside the walls, and your clan castle is centralized. I'm really liking the looks of this. I'm going to perhaps make some recommendations for moving around buildings inside the walls, however. So, let's look at that next. So just looking at your wizard tower positioning, you've got one wizard tower over here and one wizard tower over here. They're mirror imaging each other, that's just fine. But what are they covering? That's the interesting part. So you've got one elixir storage over here that's being covered by the wizard tower. Then you've got three storages over here covered by this wizard tower. Ah, that's interesting. So I would generally say you want to have two on each. Not just because, like... It's really, there's a problem with one wizard tower covering multiple storages, but it's better to spread out the storages. Um, so, as it is right now, you've got one gold storage, like, pretty much in the center of your base, and then you got one towards the side here. Instead, I would say it'd probably be better if you would swap this gold storage with this uh, air defense right here. Uh, air defense would be more centralized, that's just fine. Gold storage would be over here in position of the other wizard tower, that's just fine. And the real winner of this is, if someone wants to attack these gold storages, just sort of like I was talking about before, if they deploy a bunch of troops right here, that would eventually probably get into both these gold storages. You want to sort of avoid that if possible. So, swapping these two right there, I think would be a pretty easy fix to get that to happen. Let's check out your clan castle guys, though. Let's see. Ooh, very nice. So, a bunch of archers. Uh, archers are great. I love archers on defense. Um, you got 20 of them. Perfect. You've got up to level 5 of them. That's also cool. Um, walls. Um, going up to the level 6 walls, like you mentioned, is good. Uh, it helps against level 5 wall breakers, as you might be aware. 
takes uh, two level 5 wall breakers to bust through these level 6 walls. Of course, assuming they're not raged, but that's uh, rather unusual, especially down at these trophy counts. Definitely good to keep your town hall outside the walls. Uh, one thing I do want to note is you do have a funny single wall down here. Not sure why this is level 3, but you probably know about that. Um, back to the walls, though. When it comes to upgrading... You seem just sort of be working on sort of like this section first. That's fine. Um, you might want to con consider also upgrading sort of in order of sort of the importance of the walls. Generally, what I consider the most important are the walls that get attacked most often and are the most critical. So walls that get attacked most often are around the outside, so that's good. Walls that are most critical are going to be corner walls because that's where wall breakers are going to be targeting. So those three walls right there in the corner these three right here, so like maybe upgrade that one next, or swap an upgraded one, two right there, those are all critical. What is not critical? Things like this one right here. See that level six wall is hiding back there? Uh, these walls right here, these walls right here, they're pretty much never gonna get attacked, so you can leave those at like the lowest level for the longest amount of time. What are some other critical walls? Uh, corners like down here, up here, up here, then junctions are the ones I'm skipping so far. So junctions in here, especially the corner with themselves, uh, those are particularly important because if they take out that single junction, they're opening up all the compartments. Rather than say they take out this wall, well then they connect these two compartments, opening up two. What if they take out this one though? Then they open up both of these compartments, connecting all three. That's why the junctions right there are a little bit more important. Junction, 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 junction. You get the point. So those are the th things that I would consider upgrading first. See, where are your builder's huts? Are they in the corners? Ah, uh, yes they are. How many? You got four. Good job with that. Something you do want to be aware of, though. Um, it, in this case, it's not super important, but I'm just going to give this for this more general advice for everyone who's watching. When you've got builders, or anything really, in the corner, what this allows them to do is... If there's a way to draw out the clan castle troops, sometimes you will take advantage of this by just drawing them out and uh, using the corners to do so. How do you do this, for example? Well, if you put, let's look at the range of this. So if you put a couple barbarians right here, so maybe like four to five, just spread out, it'd take the cannon a little bit to kill them all. It would take the mortar a bit of time to... Uh, splash them up if they were all spread out. Basically, what it would allow you to do is to draw out the clan castle troops. That's a good way to attack. I like to do that as well. And it just uh, brings out the troops. It brings them to the outside. And then these few first guys die. And now what? Well, these guys are activated. So then what you would want to do next is you put like one archer, one barbarian in the corner. And then all the guys that are activated so far would troop their way on over and start attacking the one guy who's attacking the builder's hut. And then you can sort of surround them with a bunch of infantry if you want, or if you're sort of a baller and like to spend spells needlessly you'll probably lightning strike them but it's just better to just throw a bunch of guys right on them when they're away from the defense you're not taking any defensive fire and you just slaughter the defensive clan castle guys out here if you did not have these builders huts in the corners though it's a lot harder to draw the guys out to do that if say you put a single archer right here it's probably within range of maybe one of these guys it's a lot harder to draw them out because the range here the archer would be probably positioned right at the edge of this, attacking the army camp. Basically, just making it harder for them to do that. Um, just sort of in general, that's sort of why I sort of think that's important. And uh, maybe you could consider putting your builder's huts in closer as well. It's especially sort of unimportant to keep them in the corners, because the advantage of keeping them in the corners is... You don't get three-starred quite as often, but it's a really, really 1% situation um, that someone is able to take out the rest of your base, but just due to the things spread out in the corners, they're not able to get that last 1% to 2%. So I would say, especially when your town hall's outside the walls, you might want to consider just putting them inside. Of course, if you do put them closer, you can use them to soak up some damage. So I, if you were putting them closer, I'd probably put one here, one here, maybe one here and maybe the last one spread out here, in there. Um, just putting them where the defenses can shoot things that are shooting them. Now, last thing I'm going to talk about is more traps. I did mention hopefully there's a spring trap right here, but you're some good spots to put some bombs in here. You probably, hopefully, have them in. You could put a bomb right here, bomb right here, bomb right here, and then even multiples if you got more than that. I can't remember exactly how many bombs Town Hall 6 has, but just putting bombs there would catch both goblins and barbarians that are traveling between these buildings, either in the, that direction or in this direction. That's sort of the ideal situation. A one gap between two resource buildings is the ideal situation to put a bomb in. Um, Alright, yep, that's it for this base. I'm going to move on to... I'm going to only do one final base. I've been having some trouble finding your guys' bases and recording for this Town Hall 6 video. So we're going to move on to then one last final Town Hall 6 base. On to the next one, guys.
Alright guys, here we are with our third and final Town Hall 6 base for this video. So we've got, oh, how do I pronounce this? Willoker, I think? I'm going to go with that, and I really apologize if that is wrong. But let's see what you got here. So you got another town on side of the walls. You've got your wizard towers and your mortar centralized. Love to see that. You do have an air defense that's upgrading in the middle. Yeah, we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, let's check the levels on those. Were those maxed? Yes, those are maxed. Good job. Uh, always good to see those maxed out. Looks like you two are working on getting some of your walls up, but uh, I think you can listen to those suggestions I gave for our last base, uh, for Thonk, for where perhaps you could reposition some of these level 6 walls. Uh, ooh, clan castle on the, not in the center. I don't like this as much. And it's empty. Well, maybe that's why. Well, if you got clan castle troops in here, it's much better to keep them centralized. I'll just start there. And yeah, it's uh, one of the most important defenses and definitely overlooked, especially by lower levels, I believe. Um, keeping in the center is really important so they can't draw out troops easily. So right now, if you did have troops in here and they someone put a single archer right here to attack this gold mine, Clearly this is not within range, this is not within range, and this is not within range. You, you might think these are close, but remember an archer's have a range 4, so they'd be standing right out here, shooting an arrow. But that is within range of this clan castle, so it would draw out any guys you did have, if you had any. Um, so yeah, that's why you don't want to necessarily keep it on the outside here. Um, let's look at some other stuff. Okay, you got builders up in the corners as well. You have got... Let's see, I really like the storages being spread out, actually. Um, so, some people really like to centralize their storages, and um, instead, you've sort of taken the other approach of putting them really in the outside. So, these three are really in the corners, and this one's sort of more in the center. Um, by having them in the corners, people seem to think this like makes them more exposed, and yes, it does on an individual basis, but on your entire clan basis, it doesn't. So... Um, for your layout, think about it this way. If someone wants to get your elixir, what do they have to do? Well, they'd have to attack with some of the troops from this side to attack this. And yes, it's more exposed than if it was in here. But if they wanted the rest of it, they'd have to attack from down here, too, to get this. Alternatively, they just go an all-out attack and hope to just wipe out at least half your base and collect those in the meantime. Um, but this is sort of an advantage to you because... Um, if someone's going to attack all out anyways, it doesn't really matter where your storages are. They're going to go down anyways if your entire base dies. So you might as well put them on the outside. That gives the advantage of having all your defenses in the center. So yeah, that's good. Um, I will go back to the town hall briefly. Town hall outside the walls, it's just when you're down at 1030 trophies, there's no reason whatsoever to have your town hall inside the walls. Throwing it outside the walls will give you free shields all the time and encourage people not to attack uh, all out to do damage to your storages. And it will reduce the amount of damage people do to even your mines and collectors. You'll be surprised by how much less people steal just by throwing your town hall outside the walls. So highly, highly, highly recommend doing that. Ooh, looks like you are from uh, Norway, I believe that is. Norway? No, that's uh, Dutch? French? Damn, I'm bad with flags. All right, I'll skip that part because I'm bad with flags. Somewhere in Europe. Somewhere in Northern Europe. Central Europe. <laughs> yeah, I'm terrible. Damn. Um... One of those, and I think it's French, but we'll see. Tricolored French? Probably. Yeah, so back to the other things I know more about, anyways. Um, town outside the walls. Having these little spiky walls in here is something I haven't seen in a while. It's not very common to do, but something it can be effective at doing is funneling troops within your base. So sometimes I talk about funneling troops outside of bases, but this is actually the, sort of the same thing in reverse. So if you get a bunch of giants that break into this large center compartment, well, what are they going to be doing? They're going to be more running between these defenses in a row, and something you can try to do to trip them up is to put spring traps here, and to make sure they try to run on top of those spring traps is you can push these walls right here to try to encourage them to do, do so. Alternatively, they could be bombs as well. It's not a terrible choice, but spring traps would generally be more effective because all the buildings are so tight in here. Spring traps do kill a lot more. Up to 15 supplies, what they do. Um, let's see beyond that. You are currently upgrading stuff. You don't have any army I can check out, so I can't see how well your units are upgraded or what your favorite army composition is. But I will say, sort of on a larger picture, I do like this base. Uh, it's got the single large compartment on the inside and then a bunch of smaller compartments of size either 1 for up here or size 2 for these two, and then size 1 for those last ones uh, down there. Overall, it's a pretty strong base against a lot of different army compositions, both infantry, giants, um, even balloons and stuff by uh, 
keeping your stuff in little compartments, you can try to slow down guys who are attacking, and it's quite effective, especially when you keep your splash damage on the inside. Now, last thing I'm going to talk about before I wrap this up for your review is the air defense being centralized. Ah, oh, I don't like this part as much. Uh, well, not centralized, really. As being, it's What I meant to say is, I don't like the fact that your air defense is upgrading and still centralized. There we go. Um, when you've got a building that's upgrading like this, it of course cannot help on defense, it's inactive, so you should take it and throw it outside the walls and replace it with just something else. If you want, you can put the air defense in the hole, or I like just upgrade a gold mine or something that's uh, just protected a little bit better while there's an open spot. Just that simply while it's going upgrading for a day or two or three, just uh, kick it outside the walls and improve something else. Uh, Otherwise, when it is upgraded and fully active, keeping your air defense inside, that's fine. So yeah, to summarize, kick out your town hall and uh, keep this design. I really do like this. Maybe tighten up this center a little bit with the town halls outside. But beyond that, very good overall. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week's subscriber-based review video. This week, of course, was Town Hall 6, but I hope both Town Hall 6 and other Town Halls found this informative and interesting. Not just the three people I was able to review, but everyone who has a base out there and likes to try to improve it, which I certainly hope is all of you. Because improving your base, tweaking it all the time, is something I really love to do myself. But yes, to continue, if you guys would like to be in a subscriber-based review video for yourself, this is what you should do. There is a link and instructions in the description of this video, as I mentioned at the beginning. Simply go to the link as specified. It is on Duxter. Either sign in or create account. It is very simple and quick to create an account if you don't have one already. And you can apply there. And I have all my applications saved there. And the best part about this is whenever I have to uh, do another review, all of my applications are there, and if you guys would like to apply for the next review in the next week, you can just come back and update your application. You don't have to type it all out, your name's obviously not going to change, your town hall doesn't change much, your clan doesn't change very much, your trophies, just change that, update that if you got info, just uh, update that text and stuff as needed, but you can resubmit it and it saves all your info, it's a huge advantage, you guys don't need to retype and I don't get spanned with tons of repeat applications. Now something I will request is you do update your application if you uh, are wanting to be reviewed. I will only be picking people from the last couple days, last week who have applied. If I go any longer than that, there's way too likelihood that one, the base is all destroyed, which makes it hard to look at, and two, people start changing clans, changing levels, changing even town hall levels, which makes it hard to make these videos based on each town hall level. So I will only be reviewing people who have applied recently, and I will be sending reminders via my Facebook and via my Twitter page, and of course via Duxter if you're an active Duxter user, at reminding people to update their applications right before I start recording. So yes, you can go do that and uh, make sure your application is up to date to increase your chances of being reviewed. For next week, please let me know what Town Hall level you guys would like to see in the video. This week was Town Hall 6. I actually did not get very many applications for it, so I think I'll not be doing 6 very often. Uh, it will probably be Town Hall 7, 8, 9, Maybe we'll do another 10 eventually, but probably not next week. But you know what? Let me know in the comment section. That's really what I based it off of. How many people say in the comment section, and then how many applications I get. So, yeah, let me know, guys. Hope you enjoyed this subscriber-based review video. Hope you learned something. And that's going to be it. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you stuck around to the end, awesome. I really hope you enjoyed back with more content later this week more attacks more defenses i think we're going to do some reviews of some high level attacks from uh jorge all right guys thank you very much for watching have a great day and as always clash on